Hey everyone, this is Dave Parker for Breaking Audio. Today we're gonna to talk a bit about Ableton's browser. I'm gonna give you a quick overview of it and show you some things you can do with it. If you like audio production tips with Pro Tools and Ableton, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you won't miss a video. So let's dive right in. All right, so here we are in Ableton's browser. I've got a little bit of customization going on. By the way, I also blew it up nice and big for, for YouTube so it's very visible. Um, this is not the screen resolution I usually work at. But uh, yeah, I'm going to really quickly blast through the, um, the overview of the browser. If you want more detailed information about the browser, uh, you can check out the manual. But I want to just kind of get to the good stuff, right? So up at the top here, you have a, a search field where you can type in uh, you know, anything, you know, base. It would bring up, for example, the base folder in whatever, whatever category you have selected here. Um, it was search by file name. At the bottom, you've got a little preview tab, and that you, you can turn the preview on and off with this blue button here with the headphones. Maybe you do, maybe you don't want to hear the file when you click on it. Um, the first category here, the first section in the browser, is collections, which is a relatively new thing. Um, uh, it's really handy. I've been experimenting a lot with it recently. I'm going to go into more detail with it. Uh, a little bit later, but basically what it does is it gives you a quick shortcut to any kind of Ableton device or file, folder, you know, anything. Um, uh, and all you have to do is kind of click on it and assign a color to it and it will pop up in the corresponding color that you can rename. So we're going to get to some little tips on that in a moment. Uh, the next section is categories. And this is where Ableton pretty much keeps its uh, factory library and it's downloaded most of its downloaded content organized so for example you have uh, you know its instruments audio effects MIDI effects max for live uh, stuff ends up here as well which um, you know there's a lot of great free stuff on the uh, Ableton site um, and uh, the max for live website as well you can download all that and it ends up here uh, your third-party plugins end up here MIDI clips and you know audio you know samples uh, you know loops whatever what what have you but it's mostly factory stuff and other than being able to assign a color dot to something so in this case I've got my auto filter assigned to red so I can get to it quickly um, you know other than that there really isn't much customization you can do in this section um, the next section places I'll scroll this so you can kind of see how you would see it with a fresh Ableton. Um, install of Ableton. Uh, you have uh, a category for packs, which is similar to the Max for Live section here, um, where you get all of your downloaded, you know, Ableton packs from the website. They all kind of pop up in here um, by pack name, um, which I don't really like that organizational method, uh, but I'm going to have a solution for that in a moment. Um, the next part here is user library. Uh, this kind of gives you like a template sound library sort of setup with its own folder system. Um, I don't really like it so much um, uh, because it's a little bit, you know, if you look here, presets, amp, like I'm not really going to make a preset for just the amp, you know. I mean, it's going to be uh, a rack with amp plus, you know, like two, three other things, and I want to save it differently. So I, I'm not really a big fan of this. I'm probably going to delete some of these folders, to be honest. Um, I made my own uh, folders here. Because luckily, you can just kind of make your own folder. Bang, new folder, you got a new folder. Um, and you can, you know, I went ahead and made my own uh, folder systems organized the way I liked them to be. Um, I don't, you know, I can't find things this way. This is just too difficult. Um, I'm going to come back to this as well. Um, the next section here, uh, current project. This basically shows you every track and audio file and whatnot that you're using inside your project. Um, you know, uh, one thing to point out here is that is a pretty important thing. Um, when you're working on a project, it's entirely possible that you end up with using audio files or samples from elsewhere in your computer, right? So a sound library somewhere else, you know, what have you. This is, this is, it's always a good time to go up and collect all and save, right? To make sure that everything that you're actually using in your project ends up here. Otherwise, it's very easy to, in the future, open your project and not have the audio files that you thought you had saved in your project. So that's where all this stuff really ends up living, basically. Um, there's a couple little things I'll show you about this as well in the future. Um, the next thing you'll have, 
I have some custom folders here I'm gonna get to in a moment. Next thing you'll have here is an add folder. Because what's cool about places is that you can add your own folders and you can add some really interesting things uh, and do some things. This is very customizable. Um, the add folder button, it does what you think it would. It brings you to your browser and you can go select anything you want in your browser and you know the whole folder. So I can just pick it, put it in, and then have access to whatever is in that. So the way I use that is um, I organize my sound library here. So if you remember, you know, uh, two videos ago or so, I did a video about uh, organizing your sound library. I organized one for Ableton, set up the way I like it. In this case, I've got some drum sounds, uh, drum loop libraries, some MIDI stuff, wave, you know, just samples of waves, so maybe like synth samples and stuff um, of my own that I've collected. So I like to put them here. You could make one folder for your sound library. I prefer to uh, have it organized like this, even quicker access, because I don't like to click through a lot of folders to get to things. So this is my preferred way. And here you can see I've got all my like vinyl drum loops that I talked about in the other video, um, all organized by BPM, you know, percussion, what have you, um, you know, few, as few folder clicks as possible to find what I'm looking for. I also have my impulse response library here that I mentioned uh, all organized. This is a real folder that exists in my computer. Show and finder, boom, there it actually is. The other thing I can do, uh, which is really handy, um, is I can actually drag and drop folders right in instead of, whoa, get out of here. Whoa, go away. All right. Instead of <laughs> instead of using the add folder button, um, held it there a little too long. I almost had two of them for a minute. But uh, you can put anything you want in here. So there's some, there's some things you can get creative with it and kind of come up with the, your own ways of, of, of storing things and whatnot. So I could put my sound library in my user library, but I prefer to have it much more out in the open. Uh, than that. So I prefer to have the folders down here, less clicks, find it faster. Um, I tend to use my user library more for my custom made tracks, which I did a video on recently. Um, my instruments and audio effects, things like that, like not really my like audio samples, you know, that stuff I just kind of want here. Um, so, you know, because I can make any folder I want, put it, have easier access to it. So as far as what can be dragged in and out of the this area, let's, let's talk about that for a minute. It's pretty, it gets pretty interesting. Um, you can save MIDI clips, you can save audio clips, you can save whole tracks, you can save group tracks, you can save drum kits, you can save effects racks. I mean, pretty like mostly everything, like presets, all sorts of stuff can, you know, be dragged right in and out of here. Um, you know, and you can see, again, you can see example of my, my custom made tracks in that video. You just drag it in, drag it out. Um, some other uses I've found for this, um, maybe a little bit less obvious. So recently, I was working in Ableton and I was writing and I was, you know, I'm just like banging tracks out left and right. And some of them, you know, I'm getting an excess of tracks because what happens is I sometimes I like to disable tracks and keep like the original version before I kind of take it a step further so I can go back, you know, because sometimes the first take is best and whatnot. So um, I want to have that track and I kind of throw them at the top or at the bottom or something. And I was thinking to myself one day, I'm like, well, wouldn't it be cool to have a show and hide tracks? Uh, just like Pro Tools, because I'm collecting all these tracks, and I thought about it for a little bit, and I was like, oh, wait, I can totally do that. So this is how that would be done. If you go to your current project, I can go in here and I can add a folder, right? Current project is everything that's stored within your projects. This is a good place to put this. Make a folder called Hide. And then what I can do is I can take my example drums here, drop them in, and then I can delete this track. And so I've effectively hid the thing because this is still here. It's the whole track. I can bring the entire thing back if I want to. So I just drag it right back out. Boom. There's my example drum track, the original one. All right. I'll just reactivate everything and, you know, we're off. I have my original uh, concept back. So uh, that's a really cool feature, you know, um, something that, like, I haven't been using until very recently when I kind of figured it out, stumbled upon it. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's one hot tip. Another thing that's really useful is... Let's say I'm working with, I tend to work with a variety of artists and, you know, they come back from time to time. Um, maybe I have somebody come in that's like, hey, remember that track we did a while back? I had this vocal sound on it. It was like, perfect. Can we just do the same thing? Ah, yeah, okay. I didn't save that as a preset, although I, you know, I could have, but I didn't at the time, let's just say. So what I can do is I can go load another song's project folder and then access 
a sound that way, right? So I would go to add folder, go find it in my file system, which I already did here, and just click add, and then it pops up. And I go in here and I can go down to the actual Ableton file, expand it, run down here. Oh, there's the vocal. This is a group track, by the way, and this is an audio track. So I can grab the audio track, drag it in, it pops up. I have my audio effects, whatever I put on it, right here. Obviously, you wanted to delete the audio because that wouldn't work with a different song. And then there we go, bang, I have the exact same setting. And at this point, I should probably say to myself, you know what, I should save this preset because this is now the second time or more that I've pulled it up and uh, basically save it, go to my user library, my for example folder, and drag my preset in there, name it something. So now I have it always, so you know, I don't have to go do that again, although that's a super handy shortcut to go pull things from other tracks. That could be a bass sound you created. You know what, I've got this perfect synth sound and some other song that would be great for this. Let me just load that up and see what's up. I don't, I don't save everything I've ever made as a preset because it would be incredibly time consuming. So this is a good way to, to get around that. So another thing I'd like to talk about is this collection section. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's relatively new and I've been experimenting with different ways of organizing with it. So, um, you know, right off the bat, the most obvious thing would be, well, you know, I can, I can tag things, uh, you know, red, uh, that are things I want to get too quick, things that I just use all the time. I'm constantly throwing them around when I'm creating. I always stick a limiter on the master fader, et cetera, et cetera. I just want to get to a quick reverb to just sweeten something up while I'm writing. You know what I mean? Or, or to organize Max for Live, right? Because you get an awful lot. When you go down here, you get all these things. When you download some of these packs from, from Ableton's site, you just end up with a ton of stuff. So this is a good place to trim down that list a bit and be like, okay, well, these are my favorites. Uh, again, same concept with plugins. I've also linked my folders that are in my user library, right? So I can have even faster access to those, to all the, the custom uh, instruments and effects and things like that. Um, but uh, something I've been experimenting with recently um, that I might take even further is using these color dots to organize the downloaded packs that you get from Ableton as well. Because there's a lot of really useful stuff in here, but I mean, check this out. Like, I can't, you know, I'm looking for a bass sound. What about, like, you know, Drive and Glow? Or, you know, where am I going to find? I could use the search bar and then I just get a million different results. And, you know, how do I deal with this? So, what I did here is, is, is I kind of organized drum loops uh, in a few different categories. So drum loops, the whole drum loops, audio only, uh, stuff that they call, you know, top loops, you know, things like, you know, everything but the kick basically might be interesting to blend into something. Sometimes I use this stuff, you know, um, especially when I was kind of moving real quick and I was kind of trying to generate an idea, you know. Um, the MIDI drum loops, you know, um, those are good to have. I can preview stuff really quickly. Um, one of the cool things about Ableton's browser is it will preview stuff um, in time if you want to or not. So if, if I'm not playing, right, and I click on this loop, it'll preview at 105 BPM in this case. If I'm playing all this stuff, a whole mess of stuff, it'll play in time with the transport. So, you know, you've got two different ways. So these are really useful to, to have available like that. Um, so I kind of want to think about, you know, I'm thinking about recently maybe expanding upon this idea and trying to organize the, um, you know, some of the other sounds that way as well. And, you know, that could be really, that could be really useful because this to me, all these packs like this, I, I, just, I can't, I can't wrap my head around that. But uh, yeah, well, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's Ableton's browser. Um, those are some of the most useful things I've figured out to do with this thing. Um, if you have any other suggestions, let me know. Um, if you've figured out a better system for using the collections area with the color dots, let me know. I'm very interested in all the best ways to go about using that. And uh, yeah, I will see you next time. Have a good one.